Welcome to Healthy Living. My special guest today is Melissa D. Arabian, author of the book, Tasting Grace, Discovering the Power of Food to Connect Us to God, One Another, and Ourselves. What a great title, Melissa. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, you know, I just was so excited when I found out you were coming because I fell in love with you at the gym of all places. I used to go work out there at the same time your show, $10 Dinners, was on, and you just had such an infectious personality. I thought, oh no, this is making me hungry, but I couldn't turn away because it was such wonderful information. You know, you were able to feed a family of four for $10 and you've really just come a long way. Thank you so much for all you've contributed to the industry. Well, thank you so much for watching $10 dinners. Like who, who doesn't love to watch about food while we're, while we're doing something else great for our body working out. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that you became a celebrity chef sort of by accident and you, uh, uh, sort of stumbled on this career and have done so well. And this book, unlike so many of your other ones, is not a cookbook. Not a cookbook. It's about your fascinating life story and your faith journey and your journey with food all combined mm -hmm. together. And I just I just found it riveting. I, I just am fascinated by it. And you know, you talk about how you grew up ex extremely poor. Your mom was a single mother and you didn't even realize you were poor until you saw the other kids at lunchtime. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that school cafeteria can tell you a lot about where you stand in the social pecking order. And that's where I realized that I was poor. And the people in the cafeteria sort of took pity on you and they allowed you to sort of have the hot lunches even though you couldn't afford them and you would work in the kitchen to pay off your lunch. My first job in food was in the school cafeteria when I was in elementary school. And I think that the, um, the joy about, um, about that story, and it's actually chapter one of Tasting Grace, is that, um, that I was welcomed in to community. There was a little girl named Katie who used to share her corn chips with me, and she didn't just hand me corn chips, um, which by the way, she just thought she was sharing corn chips. I was actually counting on those corn chips to fill up my stomach, Aww. but she shared her life with me at the table. And when I um, was finally put on the school lunch program, I uh, was brought in with dignity and with this job and I became friends with the fellow lunch ladies and we wore our hairnets together <laughs> and I was part of a community. So food can do so much mm -hmm. to bring us together and um, and unite us. And I think that's what Tasting Grace is celebrating. Absolutely. And then you had an excruciating trauma and your mother committed suicide and for 10 years you became a heavy drinker and then you even got arrested for DUI and <laughs> yes. was thrown in jail. Yes. And it was there that you really reached out to the Lord and man, he, he met you where you were. I will tell you this, um, you wanna know who your friends are, go to jail for a night, <laughs> right? Cause you really do get one phone call. Wow. Um, but the good news and the great redemption of that experience was that God drew me right close in. And I, I think that, um, that so often, at least for me, when I was in that spiritual winter, I was sort of um, treating God like a distant relative who I didn't want to be cut out of their will. So like I would like pray every now and again. And um, the amazing thing is that I realized that God had been there all along. Yes. It was a completely self-imposed mm -hmm. winter. He had been there all along. Oh. And so what a joy to be drawn back close to our creator. That's so beautiful. Fast forward, you were working in Paris and you met your wonderful husband. Yes. And so you have four beautiful daughters. You were a stay at home mom trying to make ends meet and you know a lot about that. And so you had your homemade yogurt recipe. You put it on YouTube because it's, it saved you like a thousand bucks a year. And that got you on the Food Network. Yeah, so it was my little homemade yogurt video. And by that, I mean homemade yogurt and homemade video. Like it was literally like homemade video. This is before phones had video, uh, had video <laughs> capability. But yeah, that led to uh, me being on Food Network and, and sharing the, the voice in food that is our normal Tuesday night meal. I love chefs. I love the beauty of food as art. And there's such a lovely um, story behind that. 
But when we make restaurant food the litmus, the you know the 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 bar that we need to reach as a home cook on a Tuesday night trying to feed our families, it can be intimidating. And I felt like it was a valid voice to come forward and say, "Here's how I get dinner on the table without spending a lot of money, um, and with the craziness of, of four kids in diapers." So you were on the Next Food Network Star. It's a competition <laughs> program, and you won with this dish yes. that you're going to show. This is the bacon potato tort. Love it. Yeah, it's 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 a real elevation of some of God's really simple ingredients. Indeed. So, um, yes, I love it. Shall I, shall yes, I make let's, it? Let's see how we do it. Okay, perfect. Well, and this, I made it on Next Food Network Star, as I, as I told you, but it, the idea came from my mother-in-law, who's French, um, and I thought it was crazy to put potatoes into a crust, but it turns out that the French know a lot about food. <laughs> <laughs> the French are right. So you're just gonna take some sliced potatoes and put them in a crust. Now, um, we wanna season as we go. So I'm gonna do a quick round of salt and pepper and then tarragon. You could use thyme, but I'm using tarragon, salt and pepper. Um, the trick with potatoes is that they absorb more seasoning than you think. So give it a little extra salt. Um, if you're debating, um, there we go. And we're gonna top it with bacon. So there'll be a little more salt that comes down. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use a homemade crust or you know what? Sometimes it's a busy Tuesday night and you wanna get the refrigerated kind. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's also fine too. All right. Right? We can find God and grace in, um, in, in everything that we make. All right, just a little bit of tarragon, voila. See, look, I'm already getting my French going. <laughs> Voila! I feel like yes. I'm in France. <laughs> and then we're gonna add a little bit of heavy cream. Mm -hmm. I know, really good. Um, I will say this is rich, but one thin slice of this, plus like a nice tart green salad, mm -hmm. is really a lovely supper. Mm -hmm. So it's rich, but you know, do like the French do and just don't eat a ton of it. That's right. And, you know, I interview a lot of health experts and they say, you know, as long as you eat whole foods, you're doing okay. It's the chemicals that they put in. And so heavy cream, that's very whole and basic and doesn't have a lot of those strange chemicals added to it. Well, you know, absolutely. And I feel like everything in moderation, mm -hmm. right? God mm -hmm. created a food system that tastes good. We are meant to delight in our food with, the restriction of, you know, listen, we don't want to overdo it. All right. So, and I think that this uh, potato tort is a great example. Mm -hmm. I topped it with a, with some bacon, which is not cooked. It's going to cook on the tort and the flavor will drip down into those potatoes mm -hmm. and season them even further. And then of course, add bacon. You can leave the bacon out, but then why would you? Why would you do that? Well, yes. if you're a vegetarian, oh, right? Of all right. Um, all right. So this is you just layer this on and then then you just top it with a crust and then crimp it and you know put in the the vents and pop it in the oven for about an hour hour and 10 minutes so this is the the famous crust that your mother-in-law taught you and she's french she is what french makes this so special yeah well a uh, the homemade crust the homemade version of this would be made with butter instead of my mom used to make crust with shortening. Oh yeah, like, Crisco, a, yeah. Yes. Like I'm a product of the 70s. <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> my mom was like, Crisco is what makes it good. Right, right, makes it flaky. <laughs> but my mother-in-law turned me on to doing just butter crust and I have to say, she is on to something. If I'm okay. gonna have a small sliver of, of potato mm -hmm. tort, it's gonna be really buttery. Yeah. So, but listen, like I said, a Tuesday night, go ahead and get the refrigerated kind and that is also totally fine. And so we just kind of, do we just yep. flip this well, on here? Right. All right, oh, yeah. you know there what we you're go. doing. There we go. And then Put we over crimp. Here. Oh, I love yes. to crimp. Just fold over. Mm -hmm. Fold over. Fold over, go all the way around. Wow, you're fast. And then do you have a knife? We can slice uh, some uh, vents in, you know, to the top. Uh, oh, I. Uh, how about a fork? Fork, will we do it? Yeah. Great. Just give it some pokes. All right. You just want to make sure that some steam can come out so your mm -hmm. crust doesn't get soggy. Right, indeed. So let's there look at the finished product. This is what it will end up looking like. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And you cook this in a 350 oven? 375 mm -hmm. for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It can vary depending on your, uh, on your potatoes. If it gets too brown along the edges, just loosely put some foil over it. So right. an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Okay, and this is the this is what it looks like yes. sliced open. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's pretty yummy. So this is literally award-winning. It is literally award-winning yeah. um, uh, recipe, but it only costs a few cents per serving. So I think it's a great example of taking something humble like a potato that is grown in God's earth, yes. and then we're just 
giving it some honor and love by turning it into something special. Well put. Well, we're going to take a quick break and be back with more from Melissa D. Arabian right after this. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family. And collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app. A great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com mobile. Grow. Connect. Have fun. The all-new MyCBN app. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. Watch On the Home Front today at 2.30. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. Welcome back, and we're continuing our discussion with Melissa D. Arabian, author of the book, Tasting Grace, Discovering the Power of Food to Connect Us to God, One Another, and Ourselves. So great to have you here, and this is delectable. And what I love about this is there's a spiritual connection to everything that you make, like this right here with the Brussels sprouts. Right, this is the Brussels sprouts with the, with the penne. Um, I love this dish because it honors my kids who love pasta, because what kid doesn't love pasta? <laughs> exactly. But it also brings in God's fingerprints in the little Brussels sprouts, which are like little baby cute sweet cabbages. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that. I love that food can help us um, get a glimpse into how much God adores us. Indeed. So when we think about feeding those we love, whether it be our kids or somebody else, that gives us just a tiny glimpse into what God is thinking about us. I love it. And I heard one of these health experts I interviewed say, if you're wondering what to eat, just ask yourself the question, did God make it? And if the answer is yes, eat it. If man made it, pass. Right. And well, and the Brussels sprouts and, and you've got this gorgeous asparagus soup as well. Yeah, this is my lightly roasted or almost raw asparagus soup. And the trick to this is that I roast the asparagus just for five minutes mm -hmm. so that the outside is sweet and caramelized, but the inside is still bright and fresh and almost a little bit grassy. Mm -hmm. And so it makes for a very quick soup to make. But it also reminds me of God being the one who, yes, we can garden, we can water, but God is the one who transforms the seeds. And so the asparagus soup is a great invitation into gardening and connecting with the earth. And asparagus, I've recently learned, that is extremely good for our gut bacteria, mm -hmm. which is kind of, I mean, all vegetables are, but asparagus is one of the, our gut bacteria's favorite foods. So that's an added so bonus. it's really just all good news. <laughs> and the Brussels sprouts also extremely right, healthy. Mm -hmm. So uh, your kids don't put up a fight if you, because my kids didn't like Brussels sprouts. Well, it's probably because we grew up having Brussels sprouts that were like boiled or steamed. Mm -hmm. But if we saute them or roast 
roast them, uh -huh. um, then they then they don't have that cruciferous uh, kind of vibe and flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so it really isn't how you prepare it. But you know, if not Brussels sprouts, then another vegetable that your family really likes. Mm -hmm. um, anything that is kind of connecting us to to our creator and bringing that in. Um, so I want to talk about our our tart. I saved the best for last. You and you did it. I have to confess, <laughs> I have a the sweet tooth. The crew, by the way, is like hovering over this. When are yes. you going to be done with the segment so we can eat this? Well, uh, and you know, <laughs> here's the thing. We have this culture of guilt language around eating something sweet. You know, right. like, oh, we're not supposed to, or I've been good, or I've been bad. And I couldn't find any guilt language around food in the Bible. I just Hello. couldn't find that. So yes. um, we have a palate that loves sweets, and um, and I think God has given us some wonderful food that is full of delight and joy. Doesn't mean that we have it without any limits. Correct. But I think we can lean into um, some delicious food and share pie with family um, every now and again. Now, the trick behind this apple tart is that it's a homemade crust made with butter, but it's not rolled out. Literally, it's just pressed into the pan with mm -hmm. your fingertips. Uh -huh. In a so, tart pan. In a tart pan. I have one of those. Yes, <laughs> I think I've tart pan. once. Yeah, well then, then you have a tart. <laughs> and it's really easy. And it, literally, this whole tart takes about five minutes once you're good at it, maybe 10 if you're new at it, to make. And then you gotta get it in the oven, then it has to bake. But you know, we get so concerned with performance when it comes to hospitality and having people over. Right. And you know what? We can keep things simple. We don't have to roll out the dough if that's not our skill set. So mm -hmm. let's just leave a little bit of space and room for pressing in the dough with our fingertips. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm sure, have the gift of hospitality. And now you're helping other people do it as well. I can't believe it. It looks like an apple pie. And apple pies take so long to prepare, but you're saying this really only takes about five minutes to prepare. And then yeah. you cook it in the oven, but you could be That's doing right. other things as well while right. it's cooking. It's, it's pretty quick to put together. You know, maybe uh, let's say 10 minutes uh, for, you know, for, for someone at home so they don't get frustrated when it takes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, more than five. But the, the bigger point is that we don't need to jump through hoops and perform when we invite people into our homes. Mm -hmm. We are all called to welcome in people. And I think that we've, we we're living in this society where, where, where hospitality has become synonymous with performance yes. and with impressing. Wow. And I think that when we're focused on impressing people, uh -huh. we're sort of pushing them away and separating rather than uniting, which is what food is meant to do. Uh -huh. Food is meant to unite. So let me just tell you, if this seems stressful, then you know what? Then, then serve sliced apples and cheese on a platter. Like uh -huh. that's fine. Uh -huh. The important thing is for us to bring people in right. and to connect. That's, what's, that's what counts. What counts more than the plate is the people around the plate. Absolutely, wow, you're really speaking to me. And I think a lot of people do feel a lot of mm -hmm. pressure to perform and because of yes. that, don't have people over because they just right. can't handle the pressure. Right, well, it, it can be stressful when mm -hmm. we think we need to perform. Mm -hmm. If we are to follow what we are to believe, what we see on TV, Every dish needs to be like chef worthy and restaurant worthy and super fancy, and it just doesn't. This is regular people food, and it's yes. also delicious. All right, <laughs> we're gonna take another quick break and be right back with Melissa D. Arabian after this. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 9.30. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! 
There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy to understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta da! Whoa! The Hillsborough Falls man coming. Sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. And we're back with Melissa D'Arabian, author of the book, Tasting Grace, Discovering the Power of Food to Connect Us to God, One Another, and Ourselves. And this is such a wonderful book, and it talks about your journey with food and your journey with the Lord and your love of other people and just combines it all so wonderfully. And, you know, when you were talking earlier about entertaining, uh, this is a Caesar salad, and the highlight, of course, is the dressing, which seems really fancy and really complicated, but you have made it not so. Right. Well, and I think that there's um, there's sort of a misconception that the time we spend in the kitchen is not worthy work, and it is. However, life is busy, and sometimes you need sort of a fast hack to create something that is still homemade and delicious, but it doesn't take a lot of time. And for that, I'm gonna show you my Caesar salad dressing that is sort of a, a hack because it's not, it's not the Caesar salad with the egg in the blender and so forth, but no raw eggs here, it's just simple, delicious food that you can put together quickly. Well, that's probably a good thing because, you know, some people can't have raw eggs like people who are pregnant. Well, that's exactly right. And also, you know, there's also a risk with that. And, you mm -hmm. know, but, you know, yes, but know. also this is faster. <laughs> that's the <laughs> so same reason. We start with some lemon juice and then a little bit of Dijon mustard, which is going to serve as um, an emulsifier. It's going to help the oil and the, uh, the water come together. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to add in a little bit of garlic because what is Caesar salad without a little bit of garlic? Not Caesar salad. It is not Caesar we salad. Need the garlic. Um, I'm putting in some anchovy paste. You could also just mince up some anchovy, or just use a nice pinch of salt if you want to keep it without. Um, you know, some people don't eat. But the anchovy paste well, to me is the secret I ingredient. I love it. And you know, uh, I had the hardest time finding it because I thought it was in the seafood department, but it's in the canned tuna yeah, section. Canned so tuna. Yep. wherever canned tuna is, that's where the anchovy paste is. That's, a, that's right. And because you have anchovy and you'll have Parmesan cheese, you don't need any other salt. Okay, yeah, so, those are salty. Yeah, they're already. very salty. Mm -hmm. You can just treat yeah. anchovies kind of like salt. Uh -huh. And then we're just gonna put in a little bit of oil. And you know, anchovies are so good for you. They are, and they're also so tasty. And they add that umami, oh, yeah. which is the, that savory sort of flavor. All right, we'll get mm, this in. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the um, olive oil. Give it a little whisk so it emulsifies. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna add in some Parmesan cheese. Boom. Mm -hmm. There we go. And this right here is the Caesar salad dressing that is egg-free, so you don't have to worry about raw eggs, um, but it also takes, what, a minute or two to put together, and then it just feels a little bit special, mm -hmm. but it's also not fussy. Right. So you just take that and put it on over your, um, your salad with your croutons and some Parmesan. And it looks and like boom. you've got a little bit of romaine lettuce here. And yes. wow. And that is like restaurant quality Caesar salad. Well, and it's something that we can make at home. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to worry about it being restaurant quality because honestly, most of the food that we're making and eating mm -hmm. is food that is meant to be shared around a home table. Mm -hmm. um, and that just feels good to eat, doesn't it? It absolutely does. It's just so comforting and so loving. A lot of people, you know, their love language is food. Absolutely. And, you know, and even if it's not, this is simple enough that I think everybody can make it. So do I think everybody has to cook every night? No. Mm -hmm. But do I think that if someone out there doesn't have any recipe to make, this is a good place to start. All right, well, we're gonna take one more break and when we come back, we'll tell you how to get all of the recipes from the dishes that you've seen here today. So stay tuned. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I liked your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary, or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible, all in one place. 
The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com slash Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news. Exclusive stories and programs. Credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN News Watch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! <laughs> no super falls, man. Come and... Uh, sorry. Pardon me. Sorry. Excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. We're back with celebrity chef Melissa D'Arabian, author of Tasting Grace, Discovering the Power of Food to Connect Us to God, One Another, and Ourselves. So these dishes are amazing. Where can people get the recipes? Well, all of the recipes are on your website. Um, they can also get them on my website, melissadarabian.net. Um, these are all from my cookbooks, $10 Dinners and Supermarket Healthy. So $10 dinners, as I was mentioning earlier, I used to love watching that show. What was it like working at the Food Network? Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people want to know the behind the scenes yeah, stories of like, drama. what's it like to be on <laughs> Food Network and on Food Network star in a reality show. So I actually wrote a whole chapter about my experience um, sort of peeling back the curtain um, on life on a reality TV show for Tasting Grace. And the, the thing that was the most extraordinary about being on Food Network star was how I would lean on the ingredients. You know, when you're in a competition situation and it's so stressful, I would just say to myself, just get to the ingredients. Mm. God's in the ingredients. Yes. And then I can create something and continue God's creation. And in that way, I really found myself cooking for an audience of one. And it really was just between me and God. And what happened elsewhere, that was, that was, God's business, not mine. Yeah. So that was that's what got me through uh, through the stress of Food Network Star. That is so inspirational, and this is something we could all use when we're getting stressed yes. about cooking. If we're using God's ingredients mm. to just let Him do the work, yes. His 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 creation do the work. Well, He's done most of it, right? I mean, a tomato you just have to slice it and serve it. Yes. Like the hard part was making the tomato, and God did that for us. That's really interesting. I've never really thought about it that way. So how can folks find out more about you? You have a website? Yes, I'm at melissadarabian.net. Um, and then I'm on Instagram and Facebook um, all the time, Twitter sometimes. But yes, yeah, so all of it's Melissa D. Arabian. Well, uh, it's been such a pleasure having you with us today. Once again, folks, the book is called Tasting Grace. Melissa D. Arabian, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you for being with us. We'll see you again on the next edition of Healthy Living.